based on comments from people in this video, I want to show you how you can improve lottery wheel material and code. So let's dive in. In previous video, I mentioned that direction is really matters for this wheel. But of course, what if you want your wheel to be like this, for example? And as you can see, it breaks mask. It same applies, what if I want it on opposite side? So it will always be on this side. So I will show you how easily you can edit that. So I will open our previously created material. So I won't create from the scratch. And if you still not created this material, so please watch previous video because I don't want to cover again, same. So we're getting our rotation here yeah, from this node. And then we masking G direction. So in previous video, I said like G, it stands for the Y. So we can see from direction, if we, let's say, switching to arrows. Yeah, so red is X, green is Y, and blue is Z. Okay, an arrow pointing into positive direction, and then we have negative direction. Okay, so because now we masking G, so it means green channel, so green channel, it's our Y. If we want our wheel to work this, for example, direction, it will be on the exact axis. So we want ability to change that. So I don't want to say, okay, you need this way or that way. You can actually have any ways. You can convert this one into parameter and then change when you need that in your material instance. Or you can create another parameter Let's search channel mask parameter. It's basically the same. It looks a little bit different, but it looks nice in material instance. I will show just difference. So let's call it or mask direction. Okay. And now instead this one will connect to this one. Let's collapse it. Save it. Oh yeah, let's change it by default green. So then nothing changed here, okay? But if I will open now our first instance, and this is good example creating rest instances from the first instance, because if you remember in my first video, I created first instance from the, our material, master material, and then rest instances, there were instance of this first one, right? This is really useful because now, for example, I won't apply to all of them same time. Yeah, so if I changing to the first icon something, let's say direction of the mask, then I want all of that be applied to all instances same time. And because they're instances of this one, they will inherit that. So for example, now you see like we have this mask direction, it's a green, and if I'm changing to red, it's no, not working anymore, but if I will rotate wheel, here it is, see? And it's working now for the X. Same would be like blue, it would be Z, okay? So now, for example, if you need to place this wheel somewhere and then adjust that, you can easily do this. And this looks nice because like of this drop down. and if we would use this convert to mask uh, convert to parameter just call it mask really quickly and instead connect this one it will look like that yeah so it's tick boxes again you need to tick only one and then deselect another one so maybe sometimes by mistake you can keep for example two that may break yeah something so drop down kind of like a safe thing to use but again you can use both of them. Okay, so now it's another thing. You see like it's an opposite side of our wheel and uh, we want, of course, on this side. So how to do it? It's actually pretty simple. I already said that we have positive coordinates and we have negative coordinates. To grab negative coordinates, it's super simple. <laughs> we just need multiply by minus one. Multiplying by minus 1, we're not changing number, yeah, so if it's, for example, 30, it will still be 30, 
but it will be minus 30. Now you see, our icon is working on this side. But again, what if I'm rotating my wheel that direction? Yeah, now it's again, it's wrong side, and I maybe want on this side. It's kind of like a bad, again, go to material, changing this. So it's simple thing to do is to create parameter for, uh, like, boolean parameter. Let's search for static switch parameter, and we can call use mask negative direction, okay? So now, let's enlarge that a little bit. We can connect it into mask. And now, if we're using negative, so it means we're multiplying by minus one, so we're connecting this to true. And if we're false, so we're not using negative, we're directly connecting from uh, object orientation into false. Okay, so like that. Now, if we save, nothing changed because our prompter by default is disabled. If you want by default be enabled, you just need to put tick like this. Okay. So by default is disabled. And here we have our parameter, use mask negative direction. I can select that, you see, and now it will be on opposite side. So same, oops, not icon. So if I will put my wheel back to original position, again, if I want this icon, I can change to green. It will be this, and if I want on opposite side, I just enable my negative direction. Okay, so with simple two nodes, you can now control all directions in material. So this is one fix. Another fix was in verse. So let's look into that. Some people mentioned that wheel never stops um, after many tries. Um, I noticed that it actually stops, but it takes really, really, really long time to stop. Issue was with this initial speed. This speed, if we're going here when we're increasing, so we're checking our delay, yeah, so we're giving a uh, wheel to spin a few times, and then we're starting setting this speed. By increasing speed, it's actually we're slowing down our wheel. And actually, it was going really into high number, like one, two, and that made wheel very, very, very slow. And let's say if maybe we somewhere around zero degrees, it doesn't matter what degrees, but basically if we need to now spin our wheel around 360 degrees, hold this spin, and our speed is really, really slow, it takes forever, and it looks like it's never stopping. Uh, this is, of course, like it's really bad for the game. What we can do is we can, in here, after checking current delay, we can check our speed and not allow it to go too high. So we can set, like, if current speed, let's say lower than 0. Point, I checked something like 35, it's still fine. So you see, like, it's pretty low because we're starting with 0 0.2 and 35 is not far away from that. But in, in this case, like, we're not allowing it to go, like, to maybe, like, 1 or 2. So we're saying if current speed is lower than 0 0.35, we need in then here. So then we're still setting speed to higher. And if it's already same, yeah, like 0 0.35 or more, then don't do this and go into another thing. And another thing, it will be this, so we just need indent. So make print and all this on the same level with if. That's it, so we're controlling speed now, this way. Another thing what I didn't like is, we kind of like doing this checking angle, we're rounding it properly, so it becomes like a 30, 60, so we don't have these decimals. And uh, by setting this, rotation degrees 30 for my test it was working pretty well but it's still maybe there will be some delay or glitch yeah and maybe instead of when we need 30 degrees it will be 29 yeah or 28 
that's it. It will never match, so it will never stop. To prevent that, what we can do, we can create range. So instead of checking precisely for these degrees from the hour array, we can check for the range. And going back in here, we already know that our material supports 10 plus 10 minus degrees from our original. So for example, if we're rotating, you see 10 degrees, our material is still working. It will break, it basically stops working uh, when we're in 15. Yeah, so again, in this opposite direction, you see like plus and minus 10, it still works. So it means, it means we have this wiggle of 10 plus 10 minus degrees. So in here, when we're grabbing our current angle, we're rounding our angle, and then we're comparing. We actually don't need to add anything else, like any lines, but actually in comparison, instead of comparing exact, we can create range. So range, it would be rounded current angle lower than our angle plus this 10 degrees, and it should be float, okay? So what it means, let's say again, maybe this angle it's 30 degrees, okay? So now 30 plus 10, it will become 40, okay? So this is our, um, this extra 10 degrees. And then we're saying, and, and we're doing same, rounded current angle, bigger than angle, minus 10 degrees. And that's it. What's here we're doing, so again, if angle is 30 degrees, we're doing minus 10 now, so 30 will become 20. So it means we're now creating range between 20 and 40, okay? So instead of exactly 30, it will be between 20 and 40. So if our, this current angle will be, let's say, 25, it will still be bigger than 20, and smaller than 40, because it's 25. So it still will trigger, so it will stop. E even if it will be 35, 38, yeah? So that's it. So this is simple uh, addition, which will make, will work better. So on the side of the material and code. Last thing I want to show you is this type of the code, like print. It really helps to debug what's going on in our code. And uh, this line is basically checks what speed is now and shows on our screen. I will show example with another code. So after our current angle in here, I will do print. And then let's check current angle is. And to check for parameters. So this way we're displaying just text. So on the screen it will already say like current angle is. But of course it's not helpful if we want to check some parameters or let's say what current angle really is. And to see that we need curly brackets and then we can add oh, capital current angle. Okay. So with this one in converts our parameter, so in this case it's a float, into string. So string it's a text. And we will see on the screen constantly what angle is. And then we can see like if it really matches this range and works or not. And I can even do it easier. So I can add slash and then our angle. Okay. So we know that our angle, it will be like, for example, again, 30 degrees, okay? And then we can check current angle. But just in your head, you can, you can keep in mind that we're creating range instead of precise. And that's it. So prints really helps a lot to debug stuff. Okay, we're coming here. Verse, build verse code. Save and launch session. Okay, now in the game, when we're spinning, You can see on the left corner, uh, we have different numbers, okay? So, as you remember, first number is, says, speed. Then second number, it's current degrees. And after slash, we're going uh, for uh, what exactly angle we're aiming for to stop. 
I hope this video is helpful to you. Please press that like button and don't forget to subscribe to get notifications about future videos. See you soon!